I was born in Port Harcourt. Um, Port Harcourt is in the south southern part of Nigeria. It's a city where I think that people are imbued with um, a lot of boldness and imbued with a lot of confidence. Now, growing up in Port Harcourt, you are told that you can do almost anything you put your mind to, and I really believe them. So from Port Harcourt, I moved on to Lagos, accompanied with my fearless self that I had developed in Port Harcourt. Now, in Lagos, I got a job and started working, and I felt that there were lots of things that I was struggling with. I believe that I was one of those people um, who said things exactly as they were. You know one of those people you would meet in a meeting where someone had put through a slide that said six plus six is nine. He just made an innocent mistake. I was one of those people that would say, excuse me, six plus six is 10. Very boldly and without fear. So I spent a lot of time trying to dial up myself and dial down myself. And it's, it's a wonder that I didn't lose myself. I missed it all. Now, fast forward to whilst I was still in this struggle, I got married and then the children started coming. You know, and I'd wake up one day and there was this little child crying and needing me. I mean, it was surprising because I thought even I still needed my mother. And whilst I continued with, um, with this child who needed me, I also had to balance the home and ensure that dinner was prepared. And things just started falling apart. You know, I would find that I missed um, vaccinations. You know, I found that I missed things that I thought were really important and no serious person should be missing. And so one day I cried. I cried because I was frustrated. I cried and, you know, whilst crying, I looked and thought, hey, is that really me, the bold, confident girl from Patakot who came from a no-holds-bad society and who felt she could do anything? And so I kept being frustrated and looking for answers and solutions. I'll go for all of them. And then I thought I'll say something else to her. I'll say to her, look, it's, it's okay to cry because some days I was so frustrated with trying to balance everything that I literally broke, up in t broke down in tears. Now crying is fine, but what do you do after the tears? What you do after those tears is just rise up and keep going. Now along the way, um, I did meet a lot of judgmental people. I mean, I missed all of the things that were happening to me if I took my son or my child to the hospital. And then I met one of those matrons. You know those matrons, those big type of matrons. As soon as I came in in my suit, I would say, and then the, the conversation would go like this. What does the child have? I'll be like, diarrhea. They'll be like, diarrhea. Ah, madam, is this child on exclusive or is this child on, on the bottle? Of course, you know what the answer is. So I'm like, eh, eh, before I begin the bottle, I get a big lecture of how the bottle is really bad for the child and how every child who has the bottle and how exclusive is the answer to all the world's problems. But I think the message herein is every woman, every working mother and every woman you meet is going through something. Please do not judge her. I think that's a really important message that we should each go away with. The third thing I would say to her is, there are many things that hold you back. Please do not be the woman that stands in, that stands in her own way. And how can a woman stand in her own way? I think that a woman stands in her own way when she doesn't show up. And I'll explain it. I mean, we're sitting in those meetings, those really big meetings, executive meetings, where you have all sorts of senior people. And someone has asked a really intelligent question. And you know you know the answers, but you're mulling in your brain and thinking, how am I going to phrase this? How am I going to respond? And just before you muster up the courage to respond, another man has responded. And you're thinking, excuse me, I know that response. I know that answer. That's the very thing that I should have been saying. So I think the message in there for us is please be courageous. I mean, the answers don't always have to be right. And to be honest, when it's not right, the world doesn't break through. The world doesn't come to an end. But please be courageous to speak up. Um, in writing my manual, the second thing I was going to say to her is there'll be days when you miss vaccinations. There'll be days when you forget to take your breast pads. There'll be days when the world falls apart. But I promise you that all you need to do is put yourself together and begin the journey again. Now, one of the other things I would say to her is women can also support women. No one wrote the handbook or the manual for me. You'll agree that there are all sorts of manuals. There are different manuals about how to meet um, your husband or how a woman meets or how a man meets his wife. There's a manual on how to keep your husband when you've gotten him. There's a manual on how to keep your wife when you've gotten her. 
I mean, there's even a manual on how to have great sex. But the one manual that we miss is how to help the woman survive the pressure cooker. And that's what my column did for me. And again, I graduated from the column to make this a book called The Pressure Cooker, Lessons from a Woman at Work. And the message really in there is to say to each one and every woman, you can be the support, you can be the manual that the other woman hasn't read or that the other woman couldn't find. And how can you do that? You can pause and just share experiences. I remember one of the young girls who I had worked with in the past who had come to me to say to me, oh, she was struggling, she couldn't keep it all together, um, she was really having a bad hair day. And I said to her, I, I promise you I'm all suited up and looking great, but I have no idea what's for dinner. And that's how it is. There'll be days when you don't have those things. There'll be days where you cannot organize. There'll be days when you'll be so frustrated. But I believe that if you can pause, think about the other woman, write her a manual, just share your experiences so she knows that the world isn't perfect, I believe it would be a great way to build those bridges.